Going from one penny to $10,000 a month in 30 days, how do we do it? When I was door dashing, I realized it wasn't gonna be long term and I was just trying to make ends meet. Now I had tried building an agency before and I failed. And so when I was doing door dashing, I thought, let me just try to do this again, go all in. I had a thousand dollars in my bank account. I gave it all away and just said, let me go all in on this. And within three weeks, I made $8,900. And a lot of people don't know where to start when they're building an agency. So I thought, I'll just show you what I did, my thought process, so maybe it might be able to help you. An agency is literally any service that a business can buy. Now, most people think of an agency as a social media marketing agency, which is what everybody hears. And people choose social media marketing agency because they think, well, most businesses need clients and you can get clients through Facebook, so let me just do that. Don't do that. You're literally gonna waste your time trying to learn Facebook ads and then realize that nobody wants your service. Here's the real route you should take. Figure out what your niche is and then figure out what that niche's problems are. Everyone has problems every single day. No one is ever fully satisfied. And so everyone just always wants more. More what that is? Well, it's up to the market. So it's either more money, better relationships, better health, more time, more freedom. And in all sales, it's just a gap. We have where we are right now and where we want to go. And we buy products or services based on the fact that we believe that that product or service is going to help us get from where we are right now to where we want to go. I'm hungry. Let me go to Chipotle to buy some food to fill in the gap. I'm unfit. Let me go to the gym to become more healthy. I have no time in my business. Let me hire an employee so I can free up some time in my business. Our job is just to bridge to <laughs> our job is just to bridge the gap to get them <laughs> come on. Bro. Our job is just to bridge the gap to get them to where they want to go. Now, we can't just assume that they just want Facebook ads and throw Facebook ads in their face. Maybe the company already has way too many leads and they need employees to fulfill on the work that they already currently have. So buying leads doesn't make sense. Or maybe they do want to buy leads, but they don't want to use that current vehicle, which is Facebook ads, to get those leads. We have these things called vehicles or just bridges that we use to get someone to their end result. Now, the bridge is whatever vehicle or thing that you're using to help them get to the end result. So maybe Facebook ads is one, organic outreach is another, doing YouTube videos is another. All those things help them get to their end result or their desired destination, which is more leads. And a lot of times, a lot of companies have used Facebook ads in the past and they had a bad experience. So maybe they don't want to use that vehicle. They want to use a different vehicle to get to their end result. A lot of companies use a lot of different people just to help them get to the same end result. Like even for me, I'm using three separate softwares right now just to create this video. Each software has their own purpose. And so it just, all those things come together to help me get to the end result, which is an amazing video right here. So when I originally started, I knew that this was the case. I knew I needed to figure out what the, what are the niches, what do the industries actually want from me first. And so I started reaching out to five different industries and I called 100 businesses in one day. Now in the beginning, I just did what everybody else did. I picked the niches that I saw other people picking because I thought, well, if they did it, I'll just do it myself. But you do not want to do this. Don't target e-commerce, don't target solar roofing or med spas because there are so many people already in that space. Your favorite guru is doing it, but it doesn't mean that you're gonna have really good results doing it too. Out of the hundreds of people that I've worked with, the clients that I have that get the best results, they're the ones choosing the more unique industries, the more unique niches. They have a unique offer to those unique niches and they get to $50,000 in two weeks just by using those unique industries. Because if you think about it, e-com brands, med spas, solar companies, roofing companies, they all get 100 cold calls, 100 emails, 100 DMs per day from people like you trying to pitch a service to them. And so you gotta think, they have this buffet of options. They have plenty of options to choose from. They're gonna choose what's best for them, what they think is better. They're probably gonna choose the guy that has more experience, that has a better offer, a better ROI, better guarantee, rather than choosing some newbie that's reaching out to them in their DMs. And so what we want to do is we wanna to go to a starving crowd, someone that no one is reaching out to. Because those starving crowds, we don't have to compete with anybody. We have a completely blue ocean because nobody's reaching out to them. And so it's gonna be much easier to get clients in those industries. So when we're picking a niche, we need three criteria, which is one, they can afford your service, Two, they, there's at least 10,000 of them in America or like there's at least 10,000 of these companies. And then three, you wanna make sure that nobody else is really targeting that niche. Now, a few people can't, you obviously can find people that are targeting that niche, but uh, there's not a massive amount, thousands of people targeting that niche, like solar, roofing, med spas, or e-commerce. Let's just say tanning bed places. I don't really hear anybody else targeting tanning bed places. There's a ton of them, I see them everywhere. But the thing is, is that they don't really make a ton of money. There's like $50 per tanning that you do. And so they're not gonna have enough money to afford your services. Architects, there's a good amount of them. I don't really hear anybody targeting them. And I know they make good money. So that might be a good niche. So once I had my five industries, I went to Facebook and started just cold calling them and asking them some questions. Now, I use the Facebook business search. You can also search on Google. I found that Facebook usually gives you better phone numbers so you can contact the mobile number of the owner directly. But Google usually has like the front desk lady. So I started dialing and I used this script. Hey, I'm writing an essay for a business program I'm in and I just need to ask a few questions for my paper. Do you mind answering a few questions for me? They say yes. Great. 
what's a current daily frustration that you're running into with your business with this try to get as much information as you can out of it we're truly trying to figure out what's the gap that they're experiencing where are they at right now where do they want to go then the next question is what do you want more of and that's it so i called 100 businesses in that day and i got a lot of different answers from different people and one of the ones that gave me a really good result was pest control companies. They said that they wanted more bed bug heat treatments. They made more money off of it. They felt better doing it because, you know, they're helping a family out. And uh, it was really easy to do. Bed bug heat treatments were really easy to do. You just set up the heat treatment thing, press go, and then you just leave for 48 hours and come back. And so they loved doing that. But the problem was is that they relied on word of mouth. And so they wanted more bed bug heat treatments, but they didn't want to rely on word of mouth, which was their vehicle. So I said, my offer became... I help pest control companies get 10 bed bug heat treatments per month without relying on word of mouth. And that's how I got my first client in my agency was through that offer. But we all kind of know the, the story. The you recognize the signs of autism. Ups and downs. I targeted roofing. I targeted solar. Nothing really worked. And then uh, I basically stopped the agency and then I started door dashing. Now, when I went all in and restarted my agency, I did a B2B agency. B2B is just business to business. That's as a business, you're selling to another business. So a marketing agency is B2B. You are a business, you're trying to sell to another business. Uh, PR firms, web development, staffing agencies, they're all B2B. Even cleaning companies can be B2B because you do commercial cleaning. Or even restaurants can be B2B because if you do catering to a company, that can be B2B as well. And the reason I did B2B is because the only thing that you really need to do is learn how to get clients for yourself. And so you just learn how to do cold emailing and LinkedIn and Instagram and Facebook messages. And then all you have to do is implement the same system that you learned yourself for the business. And so if I can get clients for myself, that's B2B. And all I have to do is re-implement that system for the business that I just got on as a client. And so if I learn cold email to get clients, I can just re-implement cold email for the client that I just got. And so when I did my other agency where I had to learn Facebook ads and a lot of other stuff, I had to learn how to get clients for myself and then I had to learn how to do Facebook ads. And so I couldn't really get it up to a good amount because I would get these clients, I didn't know what to do for them and then they would churn and they would leave. And so it was a hard time getting clients and then on top of that, it was a hard time keeping clients because I didn't know how to do the Facebook ads. Now, I'm not saying that it doesn't work, but it was just easier to do, all right, let me master the art of getting clients for myself. And every time I get better at getting clients for myself, I help my clients get better at getting clients for them because it's all B2B and it's all the same. And I was able to make $8,900 in the first three weeks of doing that because it makes more sense for the company to go with you than anybody else. Because if you think about it, right, we have another agency that's doing ads. You pay them $2,000 retainer plus $2,000 for ads which is $4,000. We don't know if it's going to work. Usually Facebook ads take three months before we get any really good results. And so it, it's a lot down the drain before we actually see any results coming through. Or you go with me, you pay me $2,000 uh, per month and you will start getting results within the first month and there's no paid ads. And I also had a guarantee, which is pretty good. So it's like, if it doesn't work within 30 days, I'll give you all your money back. And for you, it's really easy because you do, okay, a $2,000 per month retainer, it might cost you $500, three to $500 a month to manage their email campaigns or whatever campaigns that you're doing. And so, okay, that's $300 down the drain. And I made you know, $2,000, so I profited $1,700 out of this deal. And you can also do different types of offers. Like you can do a pay per call basis, like they pay you $100 to $200 per call that you bring them. And this is a lot better than ad agency because, right, you have the retainer plus $2,000 of ad spend. But for you, you only pay me $200 if a call comes through or $100 if a call comes through. For them, that makes way more sense because the risk has minimized almost to nothing because I don't pay unless I get results. Now, I don't want to be biased here because it really depends on the audience and what they want. Usually, it's one of two things. I need more leads and they're looking for different vehicles to get them more leads or I need help with my business right now because I have way too many leads. I need employees to help me fulfill on the work that I have. So again, there's a lot of different opportunities and vehicles that you can go down in order to help them fulfill on the desired end result that they're looking for. And the more unique you make your offer, the better it is for you because they might hire a social media marketing agency to run their ads. They might hire somebody to do their emails for them. But if you come in and say, hey, I'll help you grow on YouTube and TikTok to get organic reach, help you reach a wider audience and get more sales through that channel, they're going to be interested, right? Because that's different from the other people that are already hired. So they'd be willing to hire you because of your unique value, but you're still helping them get the same end result of bridging the gap of where they are right now to where they want to go. Now, when you figure out who the audience is and you figure out what the audience wants and you create an offer for them, we want to sell it first before we do anything else. So don't start trying to build out a website. I do. I hear this all the time. All these people, they build out a website. They do all this stuff for the med spa niche. And then they realize no one in the med spa niche wants to buy from them. And big companies have this little secret that they use all the time. They show you this really cool thing. They say, hey, you got to pre-order it. You pre-order it and wait a couple months. And then they, based on the pre-orders that they got, they're going to start manufacturing based on those numbers. And so they sell it first 
and then they fulfill. So when I restarted my agency, I just figured, all right, let me sell it first and get some money in the door and then build out a website, then build out all my other backend stuff, then start making YouTube videos because I don't want to make YouTube videos when nobody wants my service to begin with. So then when I figured out what my audience wanted, I created a good offer for them. I had to figure out, okay, where does my audience hang out? People sometimes hang out on email or on SMS or on, they do a lot of calls for their business or they do Facebook or LinkedIn or Instagram. And so we gotta figure out where do they hang out? My audience hanged out on Facebook and LinkedIn a lot. Then I just needed to get in front of the audience. And so I started reaching out on LinkedIn and on Facebook and I automated my outreach to be able to get consistent booked calls. And I got booked calls because I had a really good offer. They wanted the offer. They said, yes, I'm interested. Then we hopped on a call, then I sold it, and then I fulfilled on it. So that's how I started my agency, built it to 10K in 30 days, starting with one penny. Honestly, I started with 10 cents and I built it to $8,900 in 21 days, but who's counting, right? So if you're starting an agency or you have an established agency and you wanna figure out how do I get 120 appointments per month on autopilot, you can book a call with me below. I'll talk to you soon.